Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Hearthstone deck spotlight. My name is Tommy Wave, and today we are looking at Epic AD's Spell Hunter. Spell Hunter, not something we've played for a while, uh, but we did play a fair bit of it, and we've also played a fair bit of Midrange Hunter in the past. And it's been a little bit, so I thought great opportunity to uh, to revisit the archetype and see what Epic AD is doing uh, with it. Uh, one thing to note is that they have uh, not included Rock Dollar. Rock Dollar being one of the, uh, I guess, premier spell hunter cards, but has in the past been noted as uh, not exactly necessary. Um, even to my side, uh, is was, uh, I guess, a little bit dismissed in a lot of those uh, mid-range hunter lists because uh, with if you cho choose to exclude them, you do get to play things like Diamond into Crackling Razor Mauler and some other nice juicy options. But uh, Epic AD has chosen to omit one of the to my sides and the uh, Rock Tala. Instead, just going for the one uh, to my side here uh, and a really nice kind of controlling mid rangey uh, uh, selection of weapons and spells and these types of things. So, uh, one of the main things that the deck does focus on is the Spellstone. Less Emerald Spellstone uh, summons two, three, three wolves. Every time we play a secret, it upgrades to summon an extra wolf. And we are playing a great selection of, uh, of secrets here. We've got two explosives, two freezing traps, two wandering monsters, uh, which is going to help us uh, power up these spell stones and also makes it very hard for our opponent to attack into us without you know running into these. So it does slow the game down a little bit, lets us get there. The other uh, late game option we have is uh, Rexar. Rexar is hopefully going to pull us through quite a lot of games that we otherwise wouldn't be able to win. And the way that we're going to be able to see these cards consistently is with two copies of Tracking. I really love this from uh, from Epic AD. I think Tracking is really important in these kind of archetypes where you have very few cards that uh, help you win the game. Uh, you know, we can win the game off of a Spellstone, off of a Rexar, but we're not really ever winning a game off of something like a Flanking Strike or an Unleash the Hounds or any of uh, any of these other cards. So it's going to be important for us to see those cards in good time because uh, if the game does go on a little bit too long, it uh, it might be too late. Other than that, like I said, we've got a nice selection of controlling mid rangey cards. We've got Hunter's Mark to combine with these two Candle Shots. Arcane Shots, very good. Uh, particularly with all of those Zulocks running around, we want to be able to maneuver around our opponent's taunts and take out key targets. All those secrets there, particularly Wandering Monster, is fantastic. Animal Companion, producing a, uh, a minion. Uh, it just all around fantastic card. Two copies of Deadly Shot. Usually only see one in these kinds of decks, but we'll see how well that goes. Eagle Horn to go with all the other secrets. Uh, and Flanking Strike is, once again, another fantastic mid rangey card helping us delete our opponent's minions whilst also producing some of our own. So we'll jump into some games and... Uh, ooh, Biazzle now following. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the support. Let's crush some games together. That is full-on King Mukla Bananas. Gets a druid here. Got our spellstone. So happy to send everything back. Try and find some. Uh, try and find some trappies. Nothing. Taking a quick sneaky work break. Nice. What do you do for? Uh, what do you do for work? You my prime sub? What? What you talking about over there? Ah, uh, web dev. Plenty of uh, plenty of devs hanging around, even in the chat there. I guess this is okay. We're happy to for them to run into our uh, flanking strike, into our um, freezing trap rather. To my side. Now, Leox not the greatest, especially without uh, unleash the hounds in our hand. But Alex, no worries. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the crew, Alex. I don't want to do that. Uh, so we can go 
freezing. Hmm. Do we freezing to set up this spell stone? What are we freezing arcane shot? Give them the mana, but let them, uh... It means that we have a freezing up for their next threat. Which I think is... Is actually pretty important. Yeah, hopefully what your workday is, uh... Going nice and smoothly. Glad that you got out to, uh... Do some sneaky snacking. Do you uh, play much Hearthstone yourself? See if they've got the. Uh, your efforts. They've got the spreading flag. No. Hmm. Looks like we're getting dunked on here, friends. Dunked on indeed. That was pretty sexy. Yeah, yeah, it was. That uh, that nourish was pretty clutch for them. Master Okart is an absolute house. He was definitely uh, definitely pretty dismissed early on. I don't think people kind of understood the the kind of ramifications of being able to get you know. This, this particular combination, get things like Hadronox and uh, Ixlid and things like that. All these like kind of clunky, overcosted minions. Oh no, back to hand. The bright eyed scout. Oh, they get two Ysera triggers. I didn't even think of that. That's. Phenomenal with it. Like I, I was like, oh, Drakari Enchanted Dragon Hatcher, that's really cool. I just totally spaced on the, the Ysera interaction as well. That's awesome. All right, let's see if we can not get dunked on like turn six. <laughs> All right, I'll be in some priest this time. Let the hunt begin. So this is a bit of an interesting one. Part of me wants to keep this eagle horn bow, but as we mentioned in the uh, in the intro, we want to hit those uh, those really powerful game winning cards. We want to give ourselves the most chance to hit um, to hit Rexar and Spellstones and stuff. So I think we'll send these two back. We can also pick up tracking along the way. Wandering Monster is just like our probably our best two mana player, especially if they have North Stride Cleric on one. Which many priest decks are want to have. Hmm. I think I'm gonna take one turn off here from playing the Wandering Monster. Give ourselves one more draw at the Spellstone. The only turn that we don't want to kind of hold this out for is a turn where we might want to use Flanking Strike. So we're going to play it next turn or, you know, not at all. Give me a good one. Damn it. Thank you. Damn it. Now oh, there's our spell stone. Okay. 
brutal. Yeah, not getting any value off the uh, the wandering monster is a little bit sucky. Maybe we should have traded in there, so when they attack with this Twilight Drake, like it, we're def it's definitely gonna bounce the Drake. If they can even just replay it. Oh, they're going aggressive. That is truly risky business. So we've got four, four secrets left in the deck. So it's about one in five. 20% tier to secret. Pinch of death Spiteful. So, spiteful means they're like, incredibly likely to have a dustbreaker. Increable. Do they have the other spike for? I still have that tar creeper. Pinch of death. I do have the other spike. What do they get here? I will be chopping now. Cool. Show me the dusk breaker. Show me the dusk breaker. Sure. Attack first. Hit that wandering monster. It's not the worst. I mean Kind of irrelevant if they do have the dust breaker. Yeah. Well played. Go out on our own terms. So Unfortunate there. Kind of shows one of the, I guess, disadvantages of uh, of this this kind of spell hunter in that we don't have a lot of proactive plays very early on, uh, so we can't really take advantage of our opponent also having a a lack of proactive plays in the in the early game. Uh, so we'll be back with another. Versus Gul'dan. Okay. Your soul shall be mine. Against the warlock. Begin. So, ugh. this is a really hard mulligan, I think. If we can assume that this is Zulok, Rexile might be too slow. Freezing Trap's not great against the deck full of one mana things, but I think we should actually keep Eagle Hornbow. I think this, um,. I think this will allow us to get a couple of good hits off on uh, on minions. Hopefully, we can find like wandering monster, or candle shot, explosives, good, and spellstone. So this is a great, this is a really good hand. We have turned our curse it's even luck, so we we guessed wrong, but hand is still fine. Alamo bot OP, new magnetic feature means Alamo bot meme decks incoming. 
Does it? I mean... Surely if you, uh... If you magnetize onto the Alamo bot and it bounces back... It loses the buff. What are the chances that they have this the swampoos? I usually only play one. Hmm. We're just gonna go aggressive right here. This is definitely this is the matchup where we wanted the the freezing trap for their for their mountain giant. Do they just snap off the swampoos here? No, snap off the gigante. Maybe we should have. Uh, Kind of played around it and played the candle shot so we could kill it. Hmm. hmm. See if they want to do nothing. It is a bit of a pickle. We probably should have ha used a bit more forethought and foresight and uh, played the um, uh, played something different. If they're just going to let us keep shooting them, that's fine by me. Shields up. I was going to say, I think it's actually better if they attack him in the Sun Fury, though. Obviously, they're playing around freezing. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of taunt. your beast. Need to hear a power this time. This sets us up to at least be able to, uh, if we potentially hit a beast off of this. 
than we have, like, between to the two kill commands in the, uh... Oh, there's a beast. Unfortunately, it's dead. Ah, oh, they had the spell stone. I think that, that was the card we were most scared of. Yeah. In, uh, in hindsight, we definitely should have abandoned the uh, Eagle Horn Bow plan. Should have just played the candle shot, used it to trade with this mountain giant early. Uh, yep, I don't think there's a way out of this. Hmm. Well, we'll play to our opponent. Yeah, I think we definitely could have played that one a bit better. Unfortunate. But, that's okay. We'll take a look at the deck. Honestly, I, I didn't really have a lot of issues with it. Uh, I think this is a... Uh, this kind of archetype is fairly well formed. It's fairly well uh, well worked out. And this is, um, you know, the right kind of selection of, of cards to be playing. Uh, the only thing that we could say is, you know, we could start cutting some of these spells to make some room for minions. You know, we could cut them to the side. Maybe one of the deadly shots. Um, even, like... Maybe some of the arcane shots or something um, to make it look a bit more like a um, a typical kind of mid-range hunter, crackling razor moors and stuff. Maybe even uh, even start cutting like unleash the hounds. Uh, I think, yeah, probably unleash is the next one that you'd start cutting out um, to get some savannah high means in there. Some of these boys, maybe just the one, but we do have Rexar, so that's a that's a great late game plan. Unfortunately, we didn't get to, to play him in any of the games. Cause, uh, I do like those games, but yeah, uh, if you are watching this video on YouTube, all links are down in the description, including a link to the Hearthbone deck article. If you do like the deck, give it a plus one, leave a thoughtful comment, uh, and all of my links are down there as well, including a link to Twitter, which is the best place for you, for you to catch me. If you've got any decks you want to ping at me, uh, also my Instagram, which I don't use too often, maybe once a week, but usually if you, uh, if you jump on there, you get some selfies or some pictures of Australian wildlife or something along those lines. Uh, until next time though, please have a great day and do remember to stay wavy. Bye.